Hello friends, welcome to VLSI Expert Lecture 9 of Clock Series. If this is the first time you are seeing this series video, I highly recommend you to check the previous lecture videos of this series. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about what is the clock skew, how does it affect timing analysis, both setup and hold violation, why it's not recommended to touch clock path just to fix the hold violation. In this lecture, we will discuss how we can use clock skew for fixing hold violation when they are large in number. So I'm referring to the same old circuit, just change a little bit so that I can explain more things just one circuit. I have already discussed in the previous lecture that for one or two violations, we usually don't recommend to touch the clock path. But if the number of violations are large in number, then we can try using clock skew balancing technique. So to explain this, I have picked a scenario where most of the flip-flops have hold violation. So before I will start, let's review few things which is very important for this and next two lectures. So actually, I have divided this thing into the th three method and one I will discuss here and the next two I will discuss the next two lecture. So you can see that adding a buffer in the clock path of capture flip-flop or removing buffer from the clock path of launch flip-flop. In a both the case, it will increase the clock skew. What does it mean? That you are decreasing the hold margin or I can say that the possibility of hold volition increases. Same thing is for the reverse case, means adding a buffer in the clock path of launch flip-flop or removing buffer from the clock path of capture flip-flop decreases the clock skew means you are increasing the hold margin or i can say that it will help us to fix the hold violation so in this example since there are a lot of hold violations so we are trying to fix them and we will focus on second technique means adding a buffer in the clock path of launch flip-flop or removing the buffer from the clock path of capture flip-flop so now I'm going to discuss the three ways which are widely used in the industry and remember every technique has its own pros and the cons. So right now in this lecture we will discuss the method one which is like a work on the global skew and then on the local skew and then we will iterate between the global skew and the local skew. If you remember I have already explained you that every design has a global skew parameter. Global skew should be within that particular range. Now how it is going to drive then or the how the designer come up with that particular number we will discuss that part later on but for now it is important that in your design there should not be any skew which is greater than this particular value so what will happen that first we will check the global skew whether it is within the range or not and if it is not we will try to fix that part once that is done then we will focus on the local skew just in case if you forget that what is the global skew, so let me remind you, it is the difference of delay between the shortest clock path and the longest clock path. So now in this circuit, if you want to figure out that uh, how you can calculate the global skew, so first you have to find out which one is the shortest path and which one is the longest path. So in this circuit, you can see that uh, the clock path associated with FF1 is the shortest one. Similarly, the, the clock path which is associated with FF4, this is also the shortest one. So now here I am not considering uh, the interconnect delay. I am just considering that from clock underscore S to clock 1 or the clock underscore S to clock 4, what is the total delay? So that here you can see that the shortest path in the sense, it is only the 2 nanosecond. Now in terms of the longest path, so from this point, the longest path is one is associated with FF3. So this is the path. Another is from clock underscore S to this FF7. And the third one is from clock underscore S2 with respect to the FF8, this particular path. So these, these three are the longest path and uh, these two are the shortest path. So now let us suppose that your global SQ number is 4 nanoseconds. So in this particular design, uh, we come up that uh, there should not be any skew greater than the 4 nanosecond. So we will try to fix those paths first which have the skew greater than 4 nanosecond. So now let's start with the first FF8 clock skew between the FF4 and the FF8. Here uh, in place of taking FF1 uh, as a reference, I am taking FF4 and I will try to explain you everything with respect to this short path versus the longest path. So here you can see that the clock skew between the FF4 
and FF8 is 10 minus 2. So, how you can calculate the 10? This is a 4 buffer and the 1 buffer. So, you can do that 5 cross 2 equals to 10 nanosecond and for FF4, it will be like only 2 nanoseconds. So, it becomes 10 minus 2, 8 nanosecond. So, to fix this, we can remove 2 buffer. Means, if we will reduce the 4 nanosecond delay from here, so you can see the moment you remove this, the 1 nanosecond whole violation of the timing path between FF7 and FF8 also fix. So initially it was whole violation with respect to the 1 nanosecond. Now it become whole margin of 3 nanosecond. It happened because the clock is Q. Uh, initially it was 10 minus 8 that means it is a 2 nanosecond. Now, when you are going to remove these two buffer, then it is it's happening like uh, 6 minus 8 nanosecond. So, it become minus 2 nanosecond. So, after fixing the global skew, it become minus 2 nanosecond. And that's the reason this violation has come down to the, uh, converted into the margin of 3 nanosecond. Now, let's discuss with the clock path corresponding to FF3. And you can see that uh, here, the global skew is also greater than 4 in a second. So now if we will remove these two buffer, it will also help to fix the whole violation between the timing path FF7 and FF3. 2 nanosecond whole violation converted into the whole margin of 2 nanosecond. Now the next longest path is corresponding to the FF7 and to make it within the range of the 4 nanosecond global skew parameter, we have to reduce 2 nanosecond delay. I can do that by removing any of these buffers, but I am just picking the buffer associated with the FF7. So, the moment you will remove this particular buffer, you are going to convert this particular hole violation from 1 nanosecond to the whole margin of 1 nanosecond. So, you can see that you remove this buffer from the launch flip flop of these two timing paths. It is going to affect all the timing paths for which FF7 works as a launch flip-flop. So, for this timing path, whole margin is going to reduce by 2 nanosecond and it become 1 nanosecond. So, from 3 nanosecond whole margin, it will be converted into the 1 nanosecond whole margin. And for this timing path, this whole margin of 2 nanosecond convert into the 0 nanosecond whole margin. Now, you can see that all the clock skew are within the global skew parameter range. So, now we can focus on the local skew. So, let us start the timing path associated with the FF6. You can see that there are two timing paths for which FF6 is working as a capture flip-flop. One is coming from the FF2 and another one is coming from FF5. Now, this particular timing path has a whole violation of 2 nanosecond and this particular timing path has a whole violation of 1 nanosecond. So, if I will remove this particular buffer, it is going to help me to fix both the whole violation in a single step. So, the moment I will remove this, my this whole violation from 2 nanosecond convert into 0 nanosecond and this whole violation of 1 nanosecond convert into the 1 nanosecond margin. But, as I explained to you previously also, that it is going to affect other timing path. Now, this buffer also associated, associated with the clock path of FF6 and FF7. There will be no effect on this particular timing path because this buffer is common for the FF6 and FF7. But for these two timing paths, which is starting from the FF7, means for uh, these two timing path, FF7 working as a launch flip-flop, so, this buffer is not common between the launch flip-flop and the capture flip-flop, that is FF3 and FF8. So, we know that if we remove the buffer from the clock path of launch flip-flop, it reduces whole margin or possibility of whole violation increases. So, for this particular path, the 1 nanosecond whole margin is going to convert into the 1 nanosecond whole violation. Similarly, for this particular path, 0 nanosecond whole margin is going to convert into the 2 nanosecond whole violation. 
Now, since this is a whole violation of 1 nanosecond, so what we can do if we can reduce the 1 nanosecond delay here and it is going to fix this whole violation from 1 nanosecond to 0 nanosecond. So it, now this particular timing path is also fixed. Now come back to this, this timing path. So as I explained that this whole margin is going to convert into the whole violation of 2 nanosecond. So now before I fix this volition, let's see the other flip-flop also in this particular clock path. This timing path has a volition of 1 nanosecond. So to fix this, you can reduce the delay of this buffer from 2 nanosecond to 1 nanosecond and it will convert this whole volition from 1 nanosecond to 0 nanosecond. But again, since this buffer is a part of a launch flip-flop, of this particular timing path. So, since you have reduced 1 nanosecond here, it is going to violate this particular timing path with 1 nanosecond. Okay, this buffer is common for the clock path of FF3 also. So, since you have decreased it from 2 nanosecond to 1 nanosecond, so it will help to fix the whole violation with respect to this timing path. So, now this whole violation is going to convert to one nanosecond. So, fix this whole violation. We can reduce the delay of this buffer from 2 nanosecond to 1 nanosecond and it will help us to fix this whole violation from 1 nanosecond to 0 nanosecond. So, now you can see that almost all the whole violation are fixed except one whole violation and we can fix this violation also if we do few other iteration but I am not going to concentrate or I am not going to discuss that part here. Because this one violation you can fix with the data path also and no need to do several other iteration on the clock path. So as you can see that we have done a lot of iteration to fix these violation with this particular method. But if you have picked correct buffer while fixing the global skew check, like here we have picked these two buffer. Maybe in the starting itself we can use some buffer from here and the one buffer from here. So, similarly, here also when I was uh, fixing, then I just removed this particular 2 nanosecond buffer. In place of that, maybe I can I can just decrease the delay of this particular buffer and some uh, fixing on this particular buffer. So, the, so, my point is that if you have picked correct buffer while fixing the global skew check, those iterations can be reduced. So now in the next lecture, we will discuss other method which will fix a lot of these whole violation in just few steps. So less than this particular method. Thanks for watching this video lecture. Do check out the other video lecture on my channel and subscribe to more video lessons. Please share your comments, feedbacks, question or request. Stay tuned for next lecture. Thank you.